right. Uh, hi, I'm Jonathan. Uh, I'm the assistant Fort Bend County Law Librarian, and this is uh, one of our uh, classes. And it's kind of short classes where we talk about uh, certain uh, databases and uh, programs that we have on our computers here that are uh, used in the practice of law or representing yourself. Um, and so we, we want to familiarize people. It's 10 o'clock, so I'll go ahead and get started. And uh, if anybody has a question, please feel free to do so. Um, you know, we do these classes uh, every Thursday, usually. Sometimes we take a break, skip a, a Thursday, but we do these every, uh, every week in a sort of a rotating schedule of things. So about once every six or seven weeks, each class comes up. Uh, we do one on Lexis, uh, we do one on Westlaw, and those are our two uh, primary legal databases that we subscribe to and uh, you know, that, are, that are available uh, on our computers here at the Law Library. And we also do some uh, uh, classes on uh, use, uses of Word and PowerPoint and Adobe uh, in doing you know, legal work. Uh, and then obviously on Tuesdays, we do classes uh, a little more in depth on some various topics uh, that are, you know, pretty, uh, say, popular topics, I guess, with the pro se folks primarily uh, here at the law library. Um, we deal with classes such as family law and probate and estate, uh, legal research, and civil litigation in a sort of a general sense. And so uh, we do those, uh, there's about seven or eight of those classes and we do those on a rotating basis as well. So about every two months or so, each class repeats. Um, so obviously those classes aren't stagnant. You know, we try to, you know, add things to them or, you know, add slides or add information uh, that's, you know, as things change or maybe you just kind of think of some topics that are uh, to add to presentations to keep them fresh. But uh, hold on one second, we didn't hit someone here. And yeah, for the uh, person who just uh, joined, the, uh, for the person who just joined, uh, we're just kind of doing my little introductory uh, deal to uh, what this class is about today. So let me wait for her. Okay, she's in too. So this, this class concerns what's called Hein Online, and it's one of our other legal databases. Obviously, Lexis and Westlaw are the heavy hitters and are, are very uh, broad in what uh, is on offer there. Hein is a little different, but it's got some really interesting features. And, and I think sometimes things like Hein and some of our other databases, uh, you know, get overlooked a little bit because maybe they're a little more niche or, or don't cover as much as Lexis and Westlaw. We have another one that we don't do programming on because it primarily concerns uh, criminal defense cases. Uh, it's called Erismans, and it's about, um, it, it essentially assists criminal defense reason in defending their cases uh, and prosecutors can use it as well but they just generally don't come in our law library um, so Hein is is one of our databases and it's available on several of our computers here uh, at the law library and it's available on the uh, the Fort Bend County Wi-Fi so it's interesting if you're in the law library and you get on the Fort Bend County Wi-Fi you can also access Hein just on your own laptop as well so it gives a little bit of extra coverage uh, as opposed to just what's on our computers. Obviously, we are um, partly closed or partly open, however you want to look at it, you know, just given the current health situation and unfortunately things have kind of taken a steps back uh, in response to the, the coronavirus situation. Um, we're only open to attorneys at this point and county staff, uh, they can come in, but we are still assisting uh, everybody uh, uh, via email, via phone, and if a person comes to the Justice Center, uh, comes to our door and knocks, we're glad to assist in that way too. So we're still printing up forms for people uh, or talking with people and, and getting their information and then maybe sending things to them via email. So, you know, that's still, we're still doing that every day. And so uh, even though things are a bit um, inconvenient at the time, both, you know, from the aspect of the law library and just the uh, Justice Center and, and a lot of other uh, offices, uh, you know, has been impacted by this. So I uh, apologize for uh, sort of the current situation, but uh, we just got to deal with what we're dealing with. Um, I'm always, you know, available by phone or email. 
uh, glad to help. Um, our phone number here is 281-341-3718. And my email address is Jonathan, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N dot Briggs, B-R-I-G-G-S, at Fort Bend dot L-I-B dot T-X dot U-S. And you can also go on our uh, Law Library uh, page on the main library website, and our contact information is on there as well. And we have a Facebook page too. So let's talk a little bit about Hein. Um, you know, sometimes I don't know if you all remember the, the uh, Christmas special that was on, I think it was uh, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and they had what was called the Island of Misfit Toys. And I sort of call Hein a little bit like that, because what it offers is a little bit, I'll say eclectic, but it's just a lot of some disparate stuff you know, it's just things that they have gained access to that they're able to put on uh, on their website. Uh, like I said, a little different than Lexis and Westlaw, who kind of provides total coverage of everything, statutes and cases and secondary resources, you know, it definitely all across Texas and a lot of depth across the federal system and uh, the various states and so forth. Uh, Hine has a lot of what that has and it has a few other different interesting things as well. I would look at Hein as a, not just a legal database, but somewhat of a legal history and history database, what it has to offer. And, and let me look at some of the things that are somewhat similar to uh, uh, Lexis and Westlaw that it also offers. If you look here on the computer, I'm here uh, at the browse databases by name. Uh, so it has uh, legal journals, law journals, and so forth, uh, really from every state uh, and the national journals, such as the American Bar Association journals and journals that have national coverage. Obviously, there's also uh, law review articles uh, that cover um, various states. So, you know, the University of Texas or the University of Houston or Baylor University, they have uh, uh, law review journals as well, and those are completely accessible. So let's take a look at kind of what they have here. We go into the browse databases by name, and let's look at the uh, core U.S. journals. And what that means is, uh, you know, journals that are, you know, the essential law review journals uh, that are in the United States. So we're going to go look at state by state. So I hit state, and now it has a roster of all the states in the union, including the District of Columbia. Uh, you know, uh, so let's go down, since we're here in Texas, and that sort of has the most relevance probably to what anybody here in Texas would be using. Uh, so let's go to Texas. And then they're just listed in alphabetical order, I believe. And so obviously close to the top, you have the Baylor Law Review. And it shows the coverage over here on the right, you know, covers it from 1948 through 2019. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if Baylor's published a uh, law review journal yet in 2020. They probably, if they haven't, they will be soon, you know, probably covering the spring or summer. And we'll be putting that online. So sometimes it takes a little while for uh, for them to catch up because the way that they put them in here is it's essentially a PDF of the printed journal itself. So if we go to Baylor Law Review, I clicked on there. And so, oh, they do have some stuff. They haven't updated their page, but they have put uh, a 2020 journal on there. They've got number one so far on there. So you click on that. This is volume 72. They've been doing this for, I guess, 72 years. And so now here is uh, the most recent copy. This is a uh, winter 2020. So this probably came out sometime like February or something like that. Uh, and it's just, it's really just a PDF of the actual uh, book uh, law review journal, as you would see it if it was on the shelf. And we subscribe to that law review journal here as well. Uh, so we get it in paper form, but you know, then you can just go through it as a PDF or you can, uh, you know, look at the various articles that are in this journal uh, and go to that. And so then, yeah, it's just like it's been scanned into the system. And then, of course, you can, if you were here, uh, if you wanted to print it or download it, you go to the uh, delivery bar up here. Uh, or if you wanted to email a copy of this PDF link to yourself, uh, you could do that as well. So you could have it for later reference uh, at home or your office. So it's, uh, and obviously you can then search within, uh, if you look at this search bar up here at the top, just like, you know, the Google search bar, or the search bar that you would find on Westlaw or Lexus. You know, you can search for topics, you know, you know, you just, whatever it happens to be, say you're searching for summary judgment or continuances or whatever, <clears throat> you would put it in there and they would search, they can, you, know, you can search, uh, excuse me one second. 
you could search within all those core US journals, or you could search in the Baylor Law Review as well to narrow your search. So, and it covers, like I said, you wanna look up the North Carolina uh, Law Review Journal or, or California or whatever. Uh, it's got pretty strong coverage across the entire United States for that <clears throat> going back many years. So that's something that would be common to uh, both Lexis and Westlaw. Um, another thing that is, is also available is, uh, let's look for it, uh, the Code of Federal Regulations. So this is something that would, I'm circling it here and I'll link to it there. Code of Federal Regulations, it's uh, part of the federal laws. It would be on the uh, Lexis and Westlaw databases. It's very voluminous, so uh, we don't have that in paper version here, but we, uh, you'll find it in government repository libraries, of which some are like, uh, um, like say South Texas College of Law, where I went to law school. You know, they had a basement and they had this stuff down there in paper form. Like I said, it's very voluminous because the uh, Code of Federal Regulations kind of puts the meat on the bones of a lot of federal statutes. So say you had the statutes that cover uh, OSHA statutes, uh, occupational safety and health, uh, you know, things about the protection of workers and regulations regarding that. So you're gonna have the, you know, some fairly broad law in like the United States Code, uh, but then this kind of gets to the details. So, you know, say if you wanted to find out what the federal regulations are regarding fall protection, you know, say if a worker is working, you know, high up on a roof or, or something like that, you know, what are the requirements that what kind of fall protection do they have to have or what are regulations regarding worker uses of ladders or something like that. So that those real, the nitty gritty details uh, can be found in the Code of Federal Regulations across all the broad topics that are covered in the U.S. Code. I think the U.S. Code has something like 50 separate titles covering things from defense and obviously there's the Constitution uh, in the U.S. Code, uh, just all manner of things, civil rights litigation, uh, many, many topics. And so you can search by looking for year. And then you look at the various titles. So just these match up, you know, with what's in the U.S. code. Uh, and, and then you just kind of go from there. You, you make your, your subcategories. Uh, I'll pick labor there. And let's see. Pick the labor code. And then you just, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's, you got to do a little bit of work to look for, but you can then look for the subsections uh, on particular areas under the labor code, and then you add that in, and one second. Anyway, you, this is the CFR. This is you can you access the the, the details of uh, the Code of Federal Leg Regulations in that. So let's go back to uh, the main page here. So they got kind of a search databases by category. They sort of have about ten broad categories: U.S. federal, U.S. state materials. But they also got a lot of stuff that centers on uh, United Kingdom and Canada, kind of the common law countries. You know that we have our same genesis from a lot of our law in the law of the United Kingdom uh, or England. Uh, that's kind of how our English common law served as the basis for a lot of how our system is structured as well. So there's materials uh, related to English law. Uh, and then you kind of get down into a little more specific. So some of the other kind of like I said, sort of the island of misfit toys things, but some of it's very interesting. Uh, we have this thing called the National Survey of State Laws. And we actually have this in hardback publication as well. We get a copy every year, uh, but you can look it up on here. So this covers a lot of the different areas of the law. And obviously from state to state, there can be differences on that, uh, on how each state enforces their laws and what the laws are. Um, obviously things like drug laws have kind of been in flux over the last few years, you know, changing things say in relationship to marijuana, uh, you know, decriminalization at a certain level. Um, but let's just say you want to look at the drunk driving laws uh, uh, across the, the states. And so it lists it just in kind of a, a spreadsheet type form and it goes in alphabetical order and it goes state by state and it goes through various topics. So, you know, you look at Alabama, the code sections of their statutes that cover uh, drunk driving and what their uh, legal limits are and so forth. 
uh, and some other, you know, sp specifics about how that state handles that offense. You know, what happens to your driver's license? Uh, does he get suspended? What are possible penalties and so forth? So there's a lot of uh, different areas and you just, you go through and you can kind of compare stuff. Uh, and it covers about, I don't know, 50 or 100 different uh, areas. You know, how do, how does each state handle, what are their legal holidays? You know, what are lemon laws here related to the purchase of vehicles? And, you know, if the vehicle turns out to be a lemon, what are the statutes in that state and how that's handled? Or marijuana laws, as I talked about earlier, or the marriage age requirements. So you look at, again, looking at the various states, what are the, you know, minimum uh, ages that people can get married and what are the circumstances regarding certain uh, lower ages? You know, if you're 16, does it have to be with parental consent? Uh, so each state has some variations, of course. Um, so it's, it's just a very interesting uh, little deal. Uh, I remember I had to do a project somewhat similar uh, to that to look at uh, when I worked as a law clerk, uh, looking at the laws of all the states uh, for federal uh, class action lawsuits. So if you're going to have a federal class action lawsuit, uh, you had to show a commonality amongst uh, the various causes of action that you're bringing across all the states to show that a class action would be proper. And so one of the things like I looked at was negligence. And so you know, that's a common issue in civil litigation, civil law, negligence, you know, car wreck cases and all kinds of stuff, premises liability. So then it goes through uh, each state and looks at their negligence laws. Uh, looks at, you know, the issues of, say, contributory and comparative negligence and so forth. So, you know, just a really very interesting uh, thing and can be very helpful. From a historical standpoint, you know, if I was a, if I was a law professor, you know, I would definitely subscribe to Hein Online because they get the law review journals, but they also get a lot of history stuff. Um, you know, like I said, it's a bit of a, a bit of a mix of what's on here. Um, you know, we've got the things such as the Pentagon Papers, uh, for those uh, of us old enough to remember when that actually happened, or for those of us who've read it in history, you know, these were papers that were uh, released uh, to the public uh, by kind of a whistleblower, for lack of a better word, about the Vietnam War and about uh, what was going on inside the Defense Department as opposed to what was being aired to the uh, public through the press, and it was somewhat different, you know, you know, they'd said to the press, you know, ah, everything's, you know, this is how well it's going. And this is, you know, how many victories we've had, and how many, you know, Viet, Viet Cong soldiers have been killed, and, you know, things are going well. And meanwhile, internally, they were saying, this is not going so great, and things are going badly, and so forth. And obviously, you know, the disconnect between what was being uh, put out there publicly uh, to the American people, and what was uh, really going on behind the scenes, you know, were two different things. And so just from a, from a historical standpoint, you know, they got the entire Pentagon Papers uh, on this website. Similar thing, they have uh, things related to, uh, let's see here, look if I can find it real quick. Slavery in America. So there's a lot of materials uh, related to uh, slavery uh, in the United States from a historical and legal standpoint. Uh, there's periodicals from, you know, definitely, you know, pre-Civil War periodicals discussing the issue, uh, slavery statutes, uh, judicial cases that looked at the slavery issue, both uh, some that are very well known to us, uh, like the uh, Dred Scott case in the Supreme Court in the 1850s, uh, you know, and some other cases from uh, the various states uh, that looked at that issue. So, you know, again, that's, you know, from more of an historical standpoint, uh, there's, you know, if we look here, there's, let me close that. You know, there's stuff also, you know, related to uh, other states, uh, state statutes, uh, early American case law. So there's just a, a lot of different stuff. It's worth looking at, you know, if you're starting some research on a particular issue, you know, don't forget to stop in and look at Hine as well. Uh, there's materials here from the U.S. presidential libraries that are here. Uh, there's obviously U.S. statutes that tie in with the Code of Federal Regulations. There's materials from the U.S. Supreme Court library things uh, related to U.S. treaties. Something that's also a little uh, pra more practical uh, from sort of the uh, practice of law side of things is the state attorney general reports. Uh, and so each state has an attorney general who's an executive uh, in, as, in the executive branch of the government. And from time to time, they're asked to issue uh, opinions on legal issues. 
And so each, uh, and they do so. And so Texas does that. Uh, somebody will ask, you know, somebody within the state of Texas, sometimes it might be a, a local office holder. Um, I, I don't know if it was in response to a local office holder, uh, but let's say the whole mask issue, uh, maybe a local judge would, you know, maybe send a request to the state attorney general saying, if I decide to implement this kind of, uh, you know, mask rule uh, for people wearing masks in response to the coronavirus, you know, would that, uh, what is Texas law state uh, on my ability to do that and basically give them somewhat of a legal opinion on the issue. Uh, and so we can look at Texas and they have legal, you know, these opinions going back uh, like 160 years. So this is, you know, something that's been in existence for a long time. So let's look at the opinions that have been issued. Obviously you can search, again, you can search across it through topic, but here we have in, uh, you know, in 2020, there's been some issued by uh, Ken Paxton, the Attorney General uh, of Texas. And so it says, this one was from a, a, a a House representative, one of, I think he's from the Houston area, uh, Garnett Coleman had sent the Attorney General a request uh, talking about the distribution of county transportation funds. And so they ask, you know, we ask a question of the Attorney General, what is, you know, uh, the Attorney General's opinion uh, on this issue in law? And the Attorney General then answers that question. And then these pages again are scanned in in PDF format. So again, and it covers the entire uh, United States. So uh, again, you know, kind of a, uh, an interesting uh, topic that is covered by Hein Online. So let me, uh, let me unmute everybody here, um, or if y'all, anybody has a question, um, I'd be glad to do so, uh, answer any questions you have. Let's see. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Hi, good morning. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, the reason I signed up for this class is obviously to understand how to navigate um, these databases mm -hmm. to get information. One, for personal reasons. For, sure. Like, I want to just try to create a will or just be able to just write down something on paper and say, this is what I want. Um, because I'm just not in a financial position to get an attorney to do it for me. Sure. So I thought this would help. And then the second thing is I recently um, got voted to be on the board of our homeowners association. Okay. So, um, just trying to figure out how to write documents to protect us in case someone says, <clears throat> I wanted to, I don't know, go to the pool. You know, we've closed the pool because of Corona. Right. Their dues. We do have an attorney, but a lot of stuff that he sends, I have to look up things just to understand mm -hmm. half of what he has sent. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, but just some type of way to communicate and say this is a legal document that we've put together stating hey, if you do go to the pool, is that your own risk? You know? Yeah. Um, because if they I mean, I would think that that would be something that the attorney would be, uh, you know, if you say, hey, can you come up with some, you know, postings that we can put up, you know, on our, uh, you know, on the on our maybe the neighborhood Facebook page or however y'all communicate that way and just obviously on the, the gate uh, of the uh, homeowners association, you know, of the pool area or other common facilities, you know, I would think that would be, you know, something that the attorney should be doing, or, you know, obviously, I don't know if your homeowners association has a management company uh, that, you know, something that they should really be coming up with uh, to put on there. Um, uh, you know, okay. yeah, I, you know, I'm familiar with homeowners associations, just like, you know, everybody else has to deal with them and so forth. And obviously it's, you know, something that comes up, uh, you know, homeowner association law. We do have some pub a publication here excuse me, on Texas Homeowner Association law. Obviously that doesn't help you right now because the library is closed to physical visitors. Um, but I mean, I'm, you know, I'm glad to do a certain level of uh, research for someone. As I said, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you my email and my phone number. And if you want to email me, I can send you some materials to the extent of what I can find. I mean, I can't 
you know, draft stuff for you. And I know you're not asking for that, but I can, you know, what we, what we are here is a, a resource of information um, and so forth. So if you have a particular request of what, what I can do as a law librarian, I'd be glad to do it. Um, you know, I can copy maybe pages of the book we have. If there was a particular topic you wanted me to look for um, and maybe find those materials, scan them in and, uh, and send them to you via email or something like that. Um, obviously, you know, there's, I would, I would just as a general sense, you know, if you're, you know, on the board of a homeowners association and you're looking for some standard notices to put up, uh, I would, you know, look to your attorney uh, or the management company to assist you all with that, to come up with some, you know, signage, uh, you know, to cover that deal. That's, I think that's a fairly, I would think they would be able to do that. Okay. Yeah. So let me give you my uh, email address if you want to write it down. Um, or, or uh, we have a couple. Do you have a? Can you write something down? Yes. Um, I started to write it down earlier. Yeah. Half of it. I got. I'll go slow. I'll go. Slow. I know because you, you came in just a couple minutes after I started. Um, so my email address is Jonathan J O N A T H A N, and then dot B R I G G S. So it's Jonathan dot Briggs, and then at Fort Bend, F O R T B E N D dot L I B, like library, but just L I B, then dot T X dot U S. So Jonathan dot Briggs at Fort Bend dot L I B dot T X dot U S. And, and yeah, please feel free to email me uh, and I'll be glad to try and find some materials for you. But I would, you know, first recommend that y'all approach. Uh, your management company or your lawyer to, uh, dr you know, draft, uh, you know, legally sufficient documents to, you know, inform the residents of the closures and the reasons behind them. You know, I would think they would want to, anytime you, you know, you're informing them of something, whether if there is, you know, other legal backing, let's say there is, you know, a rule that's come down by the county uh, or some, or other, or, you know, state or municipality has said, hey, you know, no public pools open, you know, that sort of thing you'd want to also say pursuant to, you know, uh, the recent order of the Fort Bend County judge, uh, we are closing our pools until further, you know, until further notice, you know, okay. something like that. So I would, I would inquire with them first to, you know, come up with some standard signs uh, that would quote or, or refer to any applicable court orders or, or orders by the uh, executive branch of the government, such as like I said, from the governor's or, uh, or the local people, like if you're in Fort Bend County, you know, the KP George, the Fort Bend County judge, or if you're in Harris County, uh, Judge Hidalgo, um, you know, definitely, obviously, if you're doing something that's pursuant to, you know, law or uh, orders of the, of the government, then obviously you want to cite to that as well. So, sound good? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, if we can be of any help to you, like I said, you know, we have our role as law librarians, you know, we, we can't, you know, kind of do people's legal work, but we're very glad to uh, provide people the information that we have access to. Um, so definitely glad to do that. So let me know if I can do anything for you, okay? Will do. I know the, <clears throat> the research I need to do on the will is my number one priority. Okay, you have some uh, uh, legal and estate issues? Mm -hmm. Some, you have some estate and probate issues? Um, you said I a will? Yes, um, my father-in-law is in failing health, but they don't have anything. Right. Nothing written down. Mm -hmm. so just trying to help her and seeing what my mother-in-law is going through. That just makes me want to be more proactive to make sure my husband and I have something on paper that tells sure. people what to do our property and our yeah. kids. Well, please feel free to send me an email. I can send you some, you know, standard forms. I can send you some uh, information about, you know, if, you know, just so you have it, whether you utilize it or not, um, of how to find uh, those type of attorneys. You know, I'll just say just as a sort of a sidebar, I mean, you know, I can't, we can't recommend any particular attorneys. That's not our role, but we can provide information to people so they can maybe seek an attorney if we're in a particular practice area, such as estate and probate and so forth. So I, I would just say, just in my own personal experience, um, you know, because this is an area of the law that, 
you know, a lot of people are going to have to deal with at some point in their lives. They're going to have to deal with the estate of a, a loved one that passes on, or they're going to be preparing themselves for, you know, for what happens, you know, in the future, just to be prepared, such as y'all are thinking about and so forth. And so, you know, I found, um, you know, I know it's all relative, but, you know, some people get daunted sometimes by hiring attorneys because they, the expense of doing so. Um, a lot of times, you know, some of the basic documents that you would seek, you know, some standard wills and some other documents from them, it's, I found it to be relatively affordable. It's sort of a a la carte type thing. You know, these attorneys who do wills and so forth, they, you know, they, you know, they've, uh, they've got a lot of stuff that's already set up. You know, they basically get particulars from you and then sort of plug that stuff into a lot of standard documents that are, you know, they've set up, you know, that are good, uh, you know, currently legal documents. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, they can do a lot. I, I found, you know, for, it's maybe for more affordable than I think some people might think, you know, um, but don't let that scare you from trying to maybe seek an attorney. You know, like I said, for everybody, money can be tight. Um, but obviously we can provide forms and information. Uh, but, uh, you know, look, maybe look into uh, hiring an attorney as well. You know, spending a little, you know, I'm to say a little bit, but spending some money, you know, but a relatively, you know, modest amount from what I've seen, uh, you know, to get yourself some peace of mind. So that's just a thought. You know, uh, you can kind of do it both ways. You can, you know, seek to do things on your own, but, uh, you know, maybe look into also uh, the affordability, uh, see if an attorney who can do some standard stuff for you uh, would fit your budget as well. You, know, you might be surprised, um, you know, you can, get a, you can get a lot done uh, on a basic level and like I said, get that sort of peace of mind, uh, you know, at a fairly reasonable rate compared to some other stuff. Uh, so anyway, um, you got my email address, please uh, feel free to, uh, email me and I'll be glad to send you uh, information and so forth. Uh, we're happy to do it. Okay, thank you. Oh, you betcha. And also I do, I think it, I'm not sure when it will replay again. We, as part of our, you know, the classes that we teach, this is sort of one of our shorter classes where we talk about databases and, and uh, programs, you know, computer programs, uh, you know, that people use in uh, doing their own legal work, uh, you know, such as Word and Adobe. Um, but we also have classes that we teach on Tuesdays on a rotating basis covering various issues that, you know, are, are more relevant to self-represented people, such as family law and estate and probate and, uh, you know, civil litigation and legal research and so forth. So we do those on a rotating basis. Uh, we might want to, you know, we'll probably be setting our schedule for the next month or two uh, pretty soon um, and see what our upcoming classes are, and feel free to email me about that and I can send you, uh, tell you what the upcoming classes are. If the estate and probate class, you know, like I said, it'll repeat, you know, about every two months or so. So, but in the meantime, we're, we're glad to send you information on, on what you're looking for. So, sound good? Okay, great. Thank you. Bye.